Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we are discussing about hemoptysis. One of the most important presentations in ER is due to TB. TB is the commonest cause what we are seeing with hemoptysis. But we will see all differential diagnosis, clinical features, management and prevention. Hemoptysis is spitting of blood that is originated from the lungs or bronchial tubes. Hematemesis is different that is vomiting of blood. Both are entirely different but these words are confusing. Hemoptysis is the blood production from the lung that is spit out. Severity of hemoptysis is usually classified based on the amount of blood expected in 24 hours. So it is traditionally classified as mild less than 30 ml, moderate 30 to 100 ml, severe 100 to 600 ml and massive. There are few common causes uh, of hemoptysis especially from the lungs and bronchial tree. Uh, it can be uh, tracheobronchial source, pulmonary parenchymal source or a vascular source. TB is one of the most important and common cause for hemoptysis in India. Both active TB and post TB consequences can produce hemoptysis especially when there is a cavity. From the cavity patient can have uh, blood, uh, blood leakage. These aneurysms are called as Rasmussen's aneurysm. From that blood vessels, blood can leak and patient can have hemoptysis. So TB is the one of the commonest cause in India for hemoptysis. Non-tubercular causes like malignancy, bronchiectasis, bronchitis can also produce hemoptysis. In that malignancy is very important. If patient is having weight loss with hemoptysis, you have to always think about malignancy. Hemoptysis we have already discussed that that is uh, classified as non-massive or massive. But uh, recent guidelines say the uh, amount of blood uh, which can be told in massive or mild are different. If blood loss less than 200 that is 200 ml per day that is non-massive hemoptysis. Massive hemoptysis is the volume that is life threatening by virtue of airway obstruction or blood loss uh, that is nearly 100 to 200 ml. The problem in the airways 100 to 200 ml can block the uh, anatomical dead spaces in the lungs. So after that patient will become symptomatic that's why 100 to 200 as taken as massive. And again it is further uh, classified as life-threatening hemoptysis. Uh, previously it was uh, classified as massive hemoptysis. Now it is told that this is life-threatening hemoptysis. It is defined as when hemoptysis result in life-threatening even including significant airway obstruction, significant abnormal gas exchange or hemodynamic instability. How much ever small quantity the blood is even if the quantity of the blood is even very small sometimes clots can block the uh, airway so patient can have life threatening events even with small quantities so now hemoptysis is cl classified as uh, life threatening hemoptysis or non life threatening hemoptysis Practically, this classification is very, very important because uh, the amount of blood is not very important whether the patient is having any life-threatening complications are there or not. That is very important. So we already discussed that if the bleeding uh, rate, if it is more than 100 to 200 ml, it can block all the airways uh, in the lungs and suddenly it can produce airway obstruction. So that is why again 150 ml of blood expected in 24 hours can be classified again as life threatening hemoptysis. 
whatever it is the amount of blood is not that important the clinical feature of life threatening problem like acute airway obstruction due to one bout of hemoptysis whether it is 50 ml or 100 ml that is very important that is life threatening hemoptysis so now we can classify it as life threatening or non life threatening hemoptysis we can remember the causes of hemoptysis like this battle camp so b stands for bronchitis bronchitis bronchiectasis a aspergillosis aspergilloma there is a fungal infection tumors in the lung tuberculosis lung abscess or cavities lung embolism that is pulmonary embolism coagulopathy like bleeding disorders medications like warfarin autoimmune diseases like good pasteur syndrome heavy malformation alveolar hemorrhage especially patients who is having infectious disease like leptospirosis mitral stenosis can have hemoptysis pneumonia can produce hemoptysis so these are the important causes for hemoptysis remember in india the most common cause for hemoptysis or recurrent hemoptysis is tuberculosis if the patient is having severe weight loss with hemoptysis think about malignancy also in 90% of the patients life threatening hemoptysis bleeding originates from the high pressure bronchial circulation around 5% of the bleeding events arise from the aorta or non bronchial systemic circulation and 5% arise from the low pressure pulmonary artery system so bronchial circulation bleeds are very very important now history wise we get, may get some uh, clues to make a diagnosis for hemoptysis take a detailed history in a patient who is having hemoptysis if the patient is on anticoagulants that may be the reason for hemoptysis like warfarin heparin all these things if patient is having cough bronchiectasis recurrent cough means bronchiectasis copd acute cough foreign body pneumonia again chronic cough can be due to tb fever bronchitis lung abscess malignancy pneumonia pulmonary embolism tb heart disease congestive heart failure or valvular heart disease like mitral stenosis can produce hemoptysis immunosuppression bronchitis lung abscess pneumonia tb patients are on chronic steroid use can have all this problem recent surgery immobilization pulmonary embolism this is very very important cause if the patient is bedridden and acutely patient develops severe cough chest pain and hemoptysis think about pulmonary embolism smoking can produce copd and malignancies sputum production bronchiectasis copd pneumonia tb history of trauma is there acute airway trauma or pulmonary embolism can be there chest trauma or pulmonary embolism can produce uh, hemoptysis weight loss again tb malignancies are very very important another terminology is pseudo hemoptysis upper airway bleed upper gi bleed cerebrosia a type of gram negative bacterium can also produce sometimes uh, blood like picture in the sputum cerebrosia marcensis now the evaluation of uh, hemoptysis is by classifying that into non massive or massive hemoptysis you can see the evaluation of non massive hemoptysis here in this chart normal findings on chest x ray no risk for cancer observe no risk risk for cancer history suggestive of lower respiratory tract infection treat with antibiotic risk factors for cancer again you may have go for ct scan so this is the plan so whenever you have a infection treat the patient if there is no infection take a chest x ray just observe the patient if the patient is having suspected malignancy or clinical condition correlates with a malignancy history then go for further investigation like ct if 
there is massive hemoptysis again evaluation is something like this only but uh, we will take CT at the earliest chest x-ray is the preliminary investigation and once we are getting uh, a diagnosis of pneumonia or something we can start antibiotic and repeat chest x-ray otherwise directly go ahead with CT scan you can find out where is the lesion if required bronchoscopy also should be done to evaluate the uh, 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 cause for bleeding especially in malignancy bronchial malignancy and all so chest CT is one of the most important tool in the evaluation of hemoptysis early itself now when the patient come to ER with uh, acute hemoptysis always remember to give take care his airway breathing circulation in emergency room patient position is very very important so patient should be kept in the lung the bleeding lung should be kept in the dependent position airway management NIV can be started but many patients may not tolerate NIV uh, BiPAP can produce uh, more uh, severe symptoms in hemoptysis and sometimes they can vomit blood into the uh, airway, uh, airway mask and it can produce further complications in patients with life-threatening hemoptysis intubation should be done with a large bar ET tube it will be the preferred preferable size for endotracheal tube single lung ventilation is or double lumen ventilation are alternative for routine endotracheal tubes but that can be done by a trained person in a higher center only routine emergency room uh, rooms will not have this type of uh, airway tube ensure hemodynamic stability by correcting the hypovolemia or uh, anemia or thrombocytopenia whatever hemoglobin whatever problems in the hemodynamic stability should be corrected some patients may require ffp if they have bleeding disorders ffp is required low platelets platelet transfusion is required if patient is having hypotension because of the uh, blood loss they may require fluids but should we should never try to over correct the hypovolemia that can exacerbate the hemoptysis sometime so once we stabilize the airway breathing circulation we have to look for uh, further treatment options in hemoptysis one of the most important treatment is uh, bronchial artery embolization that cannot be done in ER that should be done in radiology department we will discuss about that through bronchoscopy we can try tropical vasoconstrictive agents like epinephrine can be infused there that can arrest the bleed temporarily inhaled tranexaminic acid can produce uh, reduction in the hemoptysis so 500 mg per 5 ml uh, should be uh, nebulized for 5 days that will give temporary relief for the bleed now bronchial artery embolization is the major treatment for uh, massive hemoptysis uh, once the patient is stabilized his airway breathing and circulation he should be subjected for bronchial artery embolization the embolization agents are multiple agents one of the commonly used drug is polyvinyl alcohol that can be used to embolize the artery which is producing the bleeding once we block that artery bleeding can be arrested so before this patient may have may require ct or ct angio to find out where is the exact position of the bleed now another strategy to arrest the bleed in emergency room is single lung ventilation single lung ventilation is an option in patients with life-threatening bleeding when the bleeding 
side is known. After taking CT or X-ray, we can do the single lung ventilation. The goal of single ventilation, single lung ventilation, is for the inflated cuff of the endotracheal tube to protect the non-bleeding lung from the spillage of blood. So, from the ble bleeding lung, blood should not go to the opposite side and produce problem there. So, that is why single lung ventilation is used. It is mainly for protective ventilation. So, the patient whose right lung is bleeding should have a left main stem bronchus intubated where the where a patient whose left lung bleeding should have a right main stem bronchus intubated. So, that is very important. We are protecting the lung from the bleeding side. See, this uh, single lung ventilation is mainly used to prevent further aspiration to opposite side. If the patient is having uh, full stable uh, GCS uh, ventilation may not require, they can be given uh, normal airway breathing circulation support in emergency room. If they are having airway compromise, they need mechanical ventilation. NIV is not an option here. It can produce sometimes problem in emergency room. So, single lung ventilation is an ideal strategy, but it may not be available in most of the centers. We have discussed about hemoptysis and their uh, causes and the emergency management in emergency department. Embolization will be the treatment of choice in this type of conditions. If it is malignancy, uh, and all we have to further go ahead and remove that part of the lung. So, lobectomy and all may be required for the patient. Now, we have completed the discussion on hemoptysis. We have discussed about various causes, classification, clinical uh, features and management of hemoptysis. Thank you.